Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I'm absolutely thrilled that you are here. If you've never checked out our program before, we are primarily an interview and a commentary podcast. And one of the great things I really enjoy about interviewing people is when they're from different parts of the world and they got different things going on. And that's kind of the case today. With me on the line is Jilly. How are you doing today, Jilly? I'm doing really well, thanks. How are you? <laughs> um, it, it's been a hectic day. It's been a hectic oh. day. But hey, you know what? Hey, that's that's the way life goes, right? Yeah. Um, let me tell the audience a little bit about you. Jillian is active on TikTok. We're going to talk a little bit about TikTok today, too. You can follow her at, well, it, it sounds odd to say it, G Jilly. It's G E E G I L L Y at G Jilly on TikTok. And her TikTok bio, the last time I checked it, describes herself as a mama of greyhounds and a believer in goodness. That's kind of nice. Um, she will often use the hashtag, and I hope I'm saying this name. Uh, uh, correctly. It's G. Barre syndrome. Is that correct? Is that the proper way to say it? Guillain Barre syndrome. Guillain Barre syndrome. Okay. Let yes. me make a note of that because the, uh, the, the, the pronunciation I looked up was misleading. Okay. It's G. Say it again. Guillain Barre. It's Guy kind of a weird. Jan Barre, yes. And this is a disorder, and we're going to talk about this, in which the body's immune system attacks the nerves. Is that fair? Is that about right? Yeah. That's one of the nice things um, that I can, th there's a lot nice about social media. We hear so much about the bad things, but I believe that so, uh, social media has given a lot of people uh, the platform to raise awareness for these different things. I've been saying in the last year, there's probably been about a half a dozen things that um, I learned about that I, I don't believe I would have known had it uh, you know not been for social media and things like that. So we're going to talk just a little bit about that too, just to let people know what that is. So let's start with where you are from. I'm from Thunder Bay, uh, born and mostly raised here. We moved away for a little bit, but we came back home and I'll probably be here forever. <laughs> okay. Then that, that's in Canada for, for people to know. Yes. Um, Okay, so you've been there a long time. While we're on the subject of Canada, uh, a lot of people may not know, you guys have had a bit of a crisis with the COVID thing. Um, and you're in a, a pretty long lockdown right now. Is that correct? You want to tell us well, a little bit what life is like right now for you there? Yes. Um, well, in our province in Ontario, we've been on lockdown, well, it's a provincial stay-at-home order for probably the last couple of weeks. And it was supposed to be for four weeks. They've extended it to six weeks. Um, so our provincial borders are closed right now and we can only go out for essentials and medical appointments and stuff. So it's been it's been pretty quiet. We're homebound and hopefully getting it under control. Yeah. Um, we're getting some vaccines, not as many vaccines as, as you guys are getting so far, but hopefully we're gonna get there. Yeah, the, the area that you're in, going by your videos and all that, it seems like it's not really like out in the woods. It's like semi-rural. Is that kind of how you would describe it? Our, our city is pretty secluded. Like oh, is it? The, the nearest city is uh, Winnipeg, which is an eight-hour drive in Canada. Oh. But across the border, it's about a six-hour drive to Minneapolis. So we're, we're really surrounded by, by forest and, and nature here. We're kind of on our own. Wow, I guess so. And, you know, that brings me to another thing. I, you know, I, I, I understand that you guys, like, have... Um, you were talking in one of your videos that you have like a, a septic system, which a lot of people have, mm -hmm. but yours froze. And you, and you were talking about a Biffy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, tell me what that is. It's, it's an outhouse. Yes. But, I mean, for our house, septic field didn't freeze. Our camp septic field froze. So we do have a Biffy at camp for, um, outhouse runs. <laughs> Okay. Because, but hopefully it'll be thawed soon. So it's it's a pretty common thing around here for camps. Well, you know that's funny because uh, 
we talk about Americans and, and being spoiled. Boy, I'll tell you, that would be, I, I mean, that would be a change of lifestyle for a lot of people. I know, it's, it's an adventure for sure. <laughs> Um, tell, tell me just a little bit, like, do you have brothers and sisters or how, how, what, what was your early days like there in Canada? Um, I have an older brother and a younger sister. I'm, I'm the only adopted child in the family. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I know we had a really, a really comfortable, good growing up. My brother's in BC now, so we don't get to see him a lot, but, um, yeah, we're all really close and. It, it was a good growing up. That's awesome. Now, you also say you have, um, well, you describe yourself as a mother to two greyhounds, greyhound yes. dogs. Uh, yes. What are their names? Their names are Day and Play. They're 11 and 9, and they're both retired racers. They're just, oh, Greyhounds are just really the sweetest souls. Really? Yeah. I haven't heard that. Uh, I hear a lot about different breeds uh, here, here in the States. I got a buddy that's got a golden retriever. He just loves it. Uh, what is it about greyhounds? What uh, what are some of their like characteristics? Oh, they're just so gentle, and they just soak up every little bit of love that they can, and they just give it back. They're just they're so wonderful. I mean, we we got them later in their lives because they were on the racing circuit for so long in the U.S. Um, and they just, I mean, it took them a little while to get comfortable and learn about family life, but they just want to be held and loved and have fun. And they're just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. What would be your opinion about, about racing? I, there's, um, it's there's a very heated. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's an anti-racing movement, I would say here in the United States by a lot of animal rights activists. Um, yeah. a lot of them claim that it's, it's abuse. Um, what's your feeling on it? I didn't even really know that racing was a thing because we don't have tracks here in Canada. I had, okay. you know, I'd heard it mentioned on movies and stuff, but I really, I was kind of surprised when I learned. Um, I don't really know too much about the actual racing industry. Uh, I'm a little worried it's, it's closed down now. There's, I think the last track closed not long ago in Florida, which okay. is where my play is from. And um, it's 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 really I don't know it's a hard yeah I, a hard there's a, there's a lot of people who say that now about horses uh, yeah. that, that the horses are are often you know driven hard through their training and everything and sometimes they they break their legs and and all these other things and I do love animals so I kind of you know I have some empathy towards that. Um, it's, it's I mean, hard. I mean, plays plays career ended because he did break his leg, and they thought he would race again, so he had a hawk repair, and he's got, you know, he still has troubles with it. Um, they both came with issues, so but they can't really tell me what happened. Yeah, you know, so oh, it's, sure. it's hard. All I can all I can do is give them all the love that I can now. <laughs> Yeah, sure. And, and, and anybody that res has a rescue, um, you know, that's what it's all about. And, uh, you know, when you go out and buy these breeds that are, that are bred for the purpose of being bought or sold, you know, I sometimes question that as well, but anybody who picks up a, uh, you know, a, a rescue of one kind, uh, I have two cats and I got mine from the, you know, the humane society here <laughs> and, uh, uh, oh yeah, I, I love animals. So I, uh, I have a lot of empathy for treating animals correctly. I don't, yeah, I don't like hearing about them being test, you know, used for testing and all these yeah. other things. Um, the one thing, the one thing I do worry about with now that racing's closed is racing will go underground and then yeah. there won't be the rules and the regulations that kept my boys as safe as they could. That's a good point. Um, and it's it, it scares me in that respect mostly now because what will happen to those dogs? Yes, yeah. that's an interesting point. And, and I hope somebody is, is staying on top of that as best as possible. But as you know, when it comes to things like that, somebody's always going to find a way to you know, to uh, subvert everyone's goodwill and, and the law and everything else and do what they want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your affliction, and I'll let you pronounce it one more time. What is it called again? Guillain-Barre syndrome. Guillain-Barre syndrome. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, this is something that, uh, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, it, it affects the way the nerves interact with muscles and, and your control. Uh, is that correct? It does. Well, it, it destroys the nerves for a little while, basically. So um, no control, no feeling. I mean, there's different degrees that people get it. I was lucky mine was quite a mild case. Okay. Um, but it's still been six years of healing. So it's a really long nerve wow. repair um, getting through to healing. So Yeah. Now, it's not as um, as destructive as what, like, FA or ALS or something like that. You can recover, although I, I, some people probably better than others. But yes. there is there is a recovery path, but it takes a long time. Is that is that fair to say? It does, yes. Okay. W what, when did you first notice that something was wrong? How did the... Uh, the mishap start? Did you just start maybe losing your balance or dropping things and he's, mm, something's wrong here? How did it, how did it happen? No, it, it started really, really suddenly, actually. Um, it, it, it attacks brutally and quickly generally. It's not like MS. MS is what they first started testing me for, but it doesn't usually attack that violently. Right. So I had been doing everything normally. I'd been really active. Um, I was active in sports and, and working out really, really hard. Um, and I went to bed one night on the Wednesday night before the paralysis happened, I guess. And at about four o'clock in the morning, Thursday morning, I just had intense, intense pain start in the bottoms of my feet. I actually woke up thinking somebody was attacking my feet with nails. Wow. And it just came out of nowhere. So it was, it was really, it was terrifying actually. And I yeah. just started screaming and, and my husband, his name is Enz. He said, there's nobody here. What's happening. And, and he checked my feet and nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. and, and that was really the first sign. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of cleared up throughout the day, but it turned into, I couldn't really describe it as anything other than what dental freezing feels like. And it started creeping up my right leg. And so it was like that through Thursday, Friday, I felt better. Saturday, I was completely back to normal. Mm -hmm. And then um, I took my, we only had day at the time, our one greyhound. We took him for a walk and um, came back and it was like, I couldn't get warm. And I felt really cold and I felt really strange mm. about going to the hospital for something so silly. Yeah. But I did. And after I walked into the hospital about within a half an hour, my legs and arms were paralyzed. Oh my God. So it just came on like, like instant and scary. Yeah. Oh, of course I would be, you know, I would be scared to death. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit no of a, signs. yeah. yeah. Um, you, you know, it's interesting you say cause you, you hope that it would pass. I had a uh, a number of years ago, I had a kidney stone. I did, oh. I, this, this was before I knew what, what one was. <laughs> I remember it was a Saturday. I was sitting in my, in, in my truck, and I got this real uncomfortable pain that went, like, right through. Like, oh, my God. And it just um, – it, it lasted for real intensely for about a minute, minute and a half, and then it went away. Oh, my goodness. And, and I said to myself, well, I wonder what that was. I and mean, that can't be good, you know. And throughout the day, I felt pr pretty normal. I went to bed that night and two o'clock in the morning. It wow. came with a vengeance. I mean, I <laughs> it, it felt the best way. The, the first one I had was the worst. Now, I've had as the years have gone on, I know how to manage them now because I'm experienced with them. But yeah. the first one I had was the worst. Oh. And uh, as it turned out, my wife took a trip. I was home alone. So I had, I had to drive myself to the emergency room at two o'clock in the morning. And I, I honestly was wondering if I was having a heart attack. I mean, the pain oh. was, it was just so bad. Uh, it, it kind of went from my pelvis area up, just radiated up into my chest. And I, I literally crawled into the emergency room. Uh, the guy came out, put me in a wheelchair and wheeled me in there. And uh, the nurse came up and, and was talking to me. And one of the after the first couple of questions, the first thing she asked, have you ever had a kidney stone? <laughs> so oh. it was like, um, I know I don't think. So I underwent the test for it. And um, I, I can tell you coming out, it, it, it felt 
like barbed wire was getting pulled uh, through my urinary tract. It was horrible. And oh, I wouldn't I feel for you. I would not wish that on anyone. I've mm-hmm. had someone, I've had a few over the years. I kind of know when they're going to, when the symptoms start. So yeah. I, I started drinking a lot of water and, 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 and this and that. And um, just in my case, my doctor told me a lot of people just get them. Uh, and sometimes people get them because there's something wrong with their system. And they did a bunch of tests with me. There was nothing wrong. It's just I'm prone to them. So they told me drink a lot of water and, and all these. They, uh, one rule of thumb I was told is don't drink a lot of stuff that you can't see through. Like okay, coffee. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, I don't know if that helped or not. But what the what 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 led me into that story is kind of like you. I, I, I let it go. And uh, the, uh, the emergency room doctor said to me that night, when did you start having symptoms? And I said, Oh, I think it was sometime this morning. I was sitting in my car and before I could finish, he goes, Oh, <laughs> so you waited to two o'clock in the morning. To go oh my gosh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if something that out of the ordinary happens, my advice is uh, trust your instincts and um, go get it checked. Go get it checked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You seem genuinely positive and. Um, you know, the, obviously just talking to you, I can sense that. Is is that something that you've developed or is that something that uh, were you just born a, a positive person? I don't know. I think it's really just who I am. I mean, I my my whole life motto is kind of basically it'll work out or it won't. So yeah. why not just smile and get through whatever is going to happen? So it's just it's just how I've always been. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know it, why. It, I, I, that's unusual because with my experience, it doesn't come naturally. And that's why I, I was curious as to if that's something you've, you've developed. Uh, you know, I, I don't, it's just, I always feel like I'm about to start giggling about something. It's just, yeah. there's always flutters that I could giggle at any moment. I don't, I don't know. It drives a lot of people crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, there is such a thing as, you know, being so positive, you know, I had an aunt was like, that was like that, you know, you go to a funeral home and say, well, how did he look? And, you know, well, oh, he lost a little color, but he looks pretty good. <laughs> you no, know, he's dead. Um, <laughs> Can make anything fun. Yes. Yes. Um, in, in about your positivity positivity um being on social media there's a lot of divisiveness um i, I noticed it i'm on i'm on twitter a lot um i would have to say that twitter has been a big part of my uh, podcasting and it, it, without getting political 2016 changed something the the temperament of social media just changed mm-hmm. And uh, it's beyond politics now. There's you're either with me or you're against me. Yes. Um, how does somebody maintain that attitude when there's so much of that going on around you? And, and I don't. And, and uh, is there a lot of? I don't want to say paranoia, um, but getting back to the COVID, we've had the uh, the anti-vaxxers we've had the people who say that wearing a mask is a violation of your rights. And we've had them get into brutal fights over this. And, um, it it just seems to me that asking, um, asking somebody to wear a mask is is not asking too much. I mean, that's me. It it may be inconvenient, but it's, you know, it's not that big a deal with with all that chaos going on around you. How do you, um, how do you, uh, uh, maintain that positive, positive attitude? I just, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about because I'm seeing so much more of it, even in the last few months, people yeah. are getting angry and people are getting frustrated and I don't know how to make it better, but just trying to be kind and trying yes. to be, you know, I figure if I'm going out wearing a mask, maybe somebody else will see that it's not so bad to wear a mask. And yeah. Just you can still see people smiling over the mask. Sometimes that's really all it takes. Yes, yes. It's it's hard for a lot of people right now, and I I get it. I'm empathetic toward it. I just I just find it's better to smile through it. Well, I wish more people had had your attitude. Um, and for a long time, speaking about Canada again, I, I generally you guys are are the calm people up north. <laughs> and I'll, uh, and and we're the people that are always. But uh, I've noticed uh, these lockdowns now are taking their toll. 
there. Yeah. There's there's some anger happening. And the fact that the vaccines are not coming quickly enough and, you know, people are getting upset. It's it's kind of strange to see a place that's always so thoughtful toward each other yes. getting angry toward each other. Um, it's It's sad. Yeah. It is sad. In your situation, being as, as isolated as you are, I would have to say that crime and things like that are probably not too prevalent. But I've, I've always been told that Canada in general, you do not have the violent crime around you that, that we experience a lot of times. A lot of I, I don't know if it's true or not. Is it true that you can really go to bed at night and not worry about locking your doors? Is it that good there? It's getting worse. Here in Thunder Bay, we've had a lot of gang activity coming from southern Ontario, from Toronto and stuff. And so there's a big a big problem with that right now. But for the most part, it's still, it's a comfortable place. Yeah. Um, but we, we don't have a lot of the, the big gun issues and, and stuff that you have there. Yeah. Because it's just harder to get guns here. Yeah. Um, but... We do have a lot of gang and drug activity, which is kind of yeah. hard to deal with right now. We are having a, that's also increasingly becoming an issue in the United States. You know, over the past couple of months, we've had some horrific uh, mass shootings down here. Yes. It's and that's awesome. a, yeah, maybe another subject for another time. But that all comes back to being positive. I mean, there's a lot of bad things, you know, just happening in, in, in the world right now. But there's slivers of light in them, too. Yes. There's always helpers that come out and there's always people that try and, and get through that and, and make it better. Yeah. So you just, you really have to look for that. Yeah. Well, you're an optimist. I'll give you that. <laughs> I know. Um, what made you decide to get on TikTok? Uh, my nephew, my nephew was visiting my 11 year old nephew and he kept saying, auntie Jill, you got to get on TikTok. It's your kind of humor. You're going to love it. And I didn't really understand it. I didn't know um, what it was, even when he, he was trying to show me while he was visiting. Um, but the second time he started explaining a little more and I got on basically just to be able to keep a connection with him Okay. and, um, and his brother, cause they live in Toronto, which is about a 16 hour drive and we don't see them often. So he's the one that got me started. And I, I just fell in love with it. Once I started seeing that it's filled with people just wanting connection yeah, it, it was it's really fun. The positive side of it um, for a lot of people that don't know, it's it's an app which enables you to make these very short videos. Uh, some of them are 15 seconds. Uh, some of them are, are 60 seconds. You can shoot them either way. You can use them on the app or you can produce them on your phone and upload them. Yeah. Um, it gets criticized a lot because they say there's a lot of dancing and a lot of booty shaking and stuff like that. And that's certainly on there. It is. But, but, but what, what, uh, what amazes me is there's a lot of content on there, like what you do. Um, I have a couple of, of my good friends who are, are, are very positive on there. Um, they talk about, uh, I have a, a one of my uh, female friends uh, specializes in health over 50 and she's always trying to give these positive messages to women over 50 that you can be fit. It's not a given when you get older that you have to get out it's of hard. shape. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but she, you know, she's got all these positive messages and there's so much positive on there that I would have to say that if, 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 if I always, and, and what, what I'm trying to say here is if it's often driven by your actions. So if, if you are always, getting girls in bikinis on there it's probably because you're watching those videos exactly it is yes yeah. <laughs> it depends on who you follow and who you watch yes. and what you invite in and i'm not a saint i'm not saying a few of those don't pop in my timeline from time <laughs> to time um but uh it, it really is it's driven by your actions so if, if you follow you know really good content there's a lot on there and it's not just kids uh, I, I've been told that it's good for podcasters, but I haven't found a niche for podcasting yet. So I, uh, a lot of my friends have, they've had tens of thousands of followers on there. I have not been able to do that. Yeah. Of course, I haven't dedicated the time to it that they have. I mean, they're doing two or three videos a day, and I just don't have the time for that between, you know, having a job and having the podcast and having been on other social media platforms. I just don't have the time to do it. But yeah. um, some of the downsides, I, now I've noticed... Um, you address some comments from the time to time mm -hmm. and you're, you're always very diplomatic. In I a try way. to answer everybody. 
it, yeah, you're always very diplomatic. And even with the ones that I might have a little suspicious as, as to where, you know, maybe there's a little negative slant in some of those comments, but you always try to spin it very diplomatically. Um, here again, getting back to your attitude, um, is that ever hard to do? Has somebody really, for lack of a better term, really pissed you off? <laughs> and, and, and do you ever get that feeling like, okay, I'm going to tell this person where to go? <laughs> you know what? I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't ever want to hurt anybody's feelings, even if they hurt mine. But sometimes it does hurt my feelings, what, what they say. And I just try to answer with as much kindness as, I wish they had offered in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it, it is hard to do sometimes because when feelings are hurt, feelings are big. Yeah. 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 Well, you, like I said, you, you, you manage it very well. Oh, thank uh, you. Um, what would be your advice for someone considering getting on? What, what, what would be this? If somebody says, you know what, I'm kind of bored, you know, I'm in this lockdown and, uh, I've been hearing about this TikTok. You seem to have fun with it. What would what would you say to somebody that says maybe I should try? It? Well, what would be your advice to get started? Just um, just be who who you are, really. Like, there's so many people I see that are just trying to be big. To I want to be TikTok famous. Please follow me. Like, that's that's really not me, and that's not what I do. But I've I've met so many so many people just by being open and, and sh wanting to share friendship really. Yeah. So I would say just, just be yourself and, oh. and don't try and copy. There are challenges where you can be yourself and do a challenge that everyone else is doing. Sure. But be you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, be kind, be very kind. <laughs> yes. That's your, your, uh, your consistent message. And I would agree. I mean, a lot of these uh, challenges and stuff are designed for individuals to put their own spin on it. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's an old showbiz axiom that it's all been done before, but you have to make it your own. Yes. And, and that's kind of uh, the advice that you're giving. And it's, it's, uh... Because for there's a lot of people like me that are I'm I'm a very private person, so getting into doing that stuff wasn't easy for me. But I did want to connect with my nephew, and the challenges actually help that because they give an idea, and you can just add to it, which yeah. which is fun and a little bit easy to get started getting in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I have found even in the in 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 the few videos, I shouldn't say a few. I've done more than a few, but in the uh, in the limited amount of, of videos that I have done for TikTok, I, I, it does present a different set of skills than what you might have for YouTube or something like that. Right. So that that's always a good thing too. Uh, I, I believe I got kind of uh, directed to it by Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, he's an, uh, an influencer and, and a marketer and one of these okay. entrepreneur type guru type people. And, uh, uh I, I kind of follow him. He says a lot of good things about marketing and stuff. And he, he was the one that said, don't ignore TikTok. And, uh, so I, that's kind of what led me to it. It's um, huge. yeah, it's huge. It, it's huge yeah. to say the least. You mentioned a grateful heart in your bio and gratitude is something that we, we, we touch on here every so often at the podcast. So kind of to wrap things up, mm -hmm. gratitude is another aspect of life that a lot of times people don't have or they don't have uh, an appreciation for. You know, it's so easy to look around your life and notice what you don't have and what the other person has. It's very difficult at times to say, I'm lucky to be where I am. Um, I'm lucky to have what I have. I have generally found, and I'll let you answer, but I have generally found that, you know, the basic things in life, um, I would not say that money is not important because it is. It is. Um, but it is also very important to enjoy the basic things in life, whether it be your relationships, whether it be your husband, your wife, uh, your family. Uh, if you go through life and you have one or two really good, solid friends that you can always count on, you're very lucky mm -hmm. and you should be grateful for that. Um, I here again, I'm an animal lover and I've gotten a lot of enjoyment out of the animals that I've had over the years. And I would say that if you're not an animal lover, you're missing out on one of the basic things in life. That's very enjoyable and free for the most part. You have to take care of them, but it's, it's still free. Um, what does gratitude mean to you? Gratitude is just, um, 
everything. I mean, I don't know where I would be without just being grateful for everything, every opportunity, every experience, every person. Um, I think it's probably the most important thing in my life. I'm grateful for everything, even going through the sickness, all the things I've learned from it as I've had to learn to walk again and everything. It's just, I'm so grateful I can take a step now after yeah. not being able to. It's just little tiny things that make the big gratefuls. Yes. Yeah, it's everything. That that's a good message. Uh, you, you know, you're a, a delightful person. You, you have, you know, project positivity in your account on TikTok. And, um, I would advise anybody if you're thinking about getting on TikTok or if you're already on to look up and once again, her screen name, correct me if I'm wrong, is at G E G E E. Let me try that again. At G E E G I L L Y kind of like G Jilly. Yeah. Is, that, is that correct? That's right. That's All right. right. Well, thank you very much for being on. I really enjoyed the conversation. I really enjoyed your insights in, into what you're going through up there in Canada and, and uh, learning of what you've been through about your health. I'm so glad that you're on the mend. And it's such a very important uh, message to know that this is something that you can uh, recover from, even though it takes yes. a little time. Yes. Yeah, it takes a long time, but Hopefully I'm still on for hundred percent recovery. Awesome. But thank you so much for inviting me on. This was just wonderful. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, I'm, I'm glad you, you feel that way. And it's, it was certainly a, uh, a joy to have you on. Uh, please stay in touch. If there's anything that comes up that you would like to share, uh, whether it be, you know, in, in your part of the world or in your life, or you feel that, uh, just something you want to talk about, uh, you'd be sure to get a hold of me because I, I would certainly enjoy having you on again. Thank you so much. All right, you're very welcome. We've been talking to Jilly, and she is just a a a, a breath of fresh air, positive. Uh, you know, one of these people that just exudes good energy, and it's so glad to have you on. Thank you very much. Uh, next week, of course, the podcast will be back. Thank you very much for checking out our episode today. Just to let you know, you can find me on Twitter. That is kind of like my social media home at Billy D's on Twitter. And just about most of the major uh, social media platforms, I guess I am on. And it's always the same screen name. It's Billy D. So you search me and you see my, see my face there. You got, you got the right guy. <laughs> so once again, thank you, Chili. I really appreciate you being on. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thanks to the audience. We'll be back next week. Have a great day. Well, hello, everyone. I am Billy Dees from the self-titled Billy Dees Podcast. You can find me on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and many more of the best podcast networks. Join me for my commentary and interviews. Follow me on Twitter, really easy to find, at Billy D's. I am Billy D's. I'd love to have you listen in.